Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to do a video showing how we're making this uh, clamping uh, for your inserts on a three-quarter inch boring bar that we got coming out here real soon. Uh, it's a special boring bar. We'll show that a little bit uh, later how this works. But I need to make a, a lot of these. And you can see there's a nice radius on the back. We got a couple different angles on the front. And we got a couple different steps, three different steps over here. And if you're doing these one at a time, they're going to take forever. Even if you get your setups and pop them in and out, they're going to take time. We start with this blank and we finish there. And I made a fixture that will do all of that. And it does it really fast. And so here's the value that you have with fixturing with multiple parts and complex geometry. It can really take the labor out if you just uh, uh, think about it a little bit. I always tell people uh, when they grab, when I'm training someone, uh, and I tell them the first thing you want to do when you grab a blueprint and look at a part, I say you always want to get a game plan. A lot of people will just grab the part and not even think about it and they'll start working on it and, and then they'll run into issues. Well, if they would spend a little bit of time up front thinking about how they're going to go about it, uh, how they're going to square it up, uh, if there's holes, whatever geometry is tricky. If they think about that a little bit, they can uh, actually save themselves a lot of time in the end. And a case in point like this, if you had a blueprint with this, uh, a lot of people, especially beginners, wouldn't even know how to begin to approach doing something like that because, again, it's, it's more complex than your typical uh, part. I mean, this, doing this part would be simple. Doing that part uh, takes a little bit more effort. But anyhow, uh, this is the three-quarter inch boring bar that we have, and the clamp system will go on that. And you can see I have a, a center hole here. And so what that works for is if you have inserts, you don't need the clamp system if you've got inserts uh, that have a hole in there. Uh, and then you just get the proper screw uh, to match uh, with what the threads we have in here with the match the heads with the insert that you have. This happens to be a Kyrocera insert. Uh, but the, uh, what you can do, and this is double-ended like our other bars, but you can take and set inserts in there. Now this doesn't have a hole in there. You can't use a screw-in insert. So what you have to have, you have to have a clamping system that goes in there. And so you would set something like that. And I'll just get it kind of close right now. Now this is just S7 and we'll harden it to about 45 Rockwell, something like that. This is not a chip breaker. Uh, it's going to be way too soft. This is a clamp. This right here is carbide. And this is what I'm going to be clamping on. And so for this style insert, it will work as a chip breaker. Yeah, so, so basically this is a clamp, holds down on your chip breaker, and it's an adjustable chip breaker. And the beauty of these, they take a little more time to set up, but you can get the perfect chip break by getting that position just right. And uh, so this is the clamping system that will hold on that. Now, when you're going to ceramic, it's very brittle, and you don't need a chip breaker because you're taking light cuts. And so what this, you still use this pad on there, the reason you use the pad is because that little surface that you saw in there, if you clamp directly on that surface, that uh, ceramic will crack. And what this pad does, because that carbide is nice and flat, it distributes the force all the way around. One of the problems we've had in the past when we're looking for boring bars at hard turn, and we want to use the cheaper ceramics, and these cars here ceramics are some of the best I ever used, uh, they don't have a, a hole in there you need a clamping system that will hold that down. But everything that I found on the market that I tried, uh, there's so much pressure in the hard turn that what would happen is that you start hard turning with just about, uh, let me loosen this up a little bit so I can mimic it. You start, you start pushing on there and then the insert, uh, let me loosen up a little more. Uh, the insert would actually spin in the pocket and, and then your hole and the sizes wouldn't uh, come out. And then, so your insert would spin. I'm exaggerating, but that's what it would do. It would be moving in the pocket because all the clamp systems that were on the market, there was nothing that would uh, hold with enough pressure 
uh, hold those uh, inserts in place. But by making this system right here, uh, I can take actually a very heavy cut. Uh, I can't remember what size cut I was taking. I think it was either 50 total or 50 per side. And that insert wouldn't move. In fact, the cut was so big, the bar flexed, and then the hole was a little bit smaller by about a thousandth, and you take a blank pass, and it would be there. Uh, anything else that I tried on the market, uh, I was lucky if I could get uh, probably seven or eight thousandths per side on a cut without that insert spinning on me. So this type and style boring bar, if you're going to do hard turning, this clamp system really works very well for it. So this is the bar we got uh, the three quarters will be coming out with pretty soon. Uh, and then we're, we're going to move on to the one inch. Uh, we don't have any pricing on it yet. Uh, we're still waiting. Uh, we got so much stuff we're doing here. We're having these done to our specifications with the CNC shop. Uh, and uh, we'll do the one inch that way too. And we'll make the clamps because now that I got the fixturing, that's something that I can train the kids with and that they can do a real good job on that. So anyhow, let's go to the fixture. So on the fixture, uh, I have I have a shoulder bolt. Let me find one right here. This one's a little bit longer. <clears throat> but this is a shoulder bolt. And what I did, I, I cut the step in the mill. I cut the step from here to here to an exact side. And... Uh, I, I knew what my thickness, I got a pocket on the other side, I knew what my thickness would be here. And then I, I machined it. <clears throat> so that this comes up through so that you have this, this uh, bearing diameter over here. Uh, it's in this plate and it's in this plate. And then it's threaded in, in there as well. So the shoulder bolt's sticking up like that. You can't see it in there. So what happens is it makes a nice pivot point for this and and I made that step just right so that when I tighten this down this is real stiff so anyways what we'll do here Basically, you stick your part in there. Now, this in, uh, wrench uh, is kind of sticky on there. I already have this position uh, so it's centered on the pivot point this way. And what I'll do uh, before I do that, I've got one more thing I got to do. To make this thing a whole lot easier, I got to put a fancy handle on here. There, that'll make spinning it and pivoting it a whole lot easier. So basically, when you're using this method, you got to be careful. And if you don't have experience in this, I definitely wouldn't do it. I always use a small end mill. I got a quarter inch. I wouldn't use any bigger than a quarter inch end mill because I want that end mill to break if something jams. Uh, even if you went with a 316, you'd be better. And uh, so uh, there is some danger to this. So just be careful if you're trying to do it. And if you don't have the experience, I wouldn't even do it. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to come up until I see it touch. And I need to go in a little bit further. You can see uh, I can actually ink that up. And just take another couple thousandths off.
And I got this set up so that these dowels on both sides will stop me before I go too far. So there you can see we got a hundred percent cleanup on that right now. What's nice about this, if you have multiple parts, now you just stick the next part in. Put the radius, pop it out, and put the next one in. In fact, I, I got another part. And uh, let me just pop that in there just to show you once you get it set to what size you can set your digital at zero. Uh, <clears throat> but this, this works real good. It cuts very free. You can feel how free it cuts. A little wrench like this is really nice for this kind of work. And it's that quick. You got a nice radius on there. And what this radius is for uh, is so that uh, you have a radius in the pocket here that gives you the clearance that you need back there. And what I'll do is I'll just take the burrs off, but when I'm doing these in production, I just do them all, and then I deburr them all on a scotch break. Next thing that we want to do, we want to set this, and we want to cut that first angle. And so what we have here, uh, we have this slot that holds the part in place, and we can uh, at the proper angle. I have a screw, a uh, flathead screw over here. So I can lock, it's locked uh, somewhat, or it's held by the pivot point there. But then when I put this uh, screw in, Right there, it locks it in real good. So now, I can take and what I want to do is I want to set this so it's almost coming out to a point. And that looks pretty good right there. And that establishes our first angle. And I gotta get over this side a minute. And I think I'll come down about another 10 more thousandths or so. And now I got me an angle going this direction, plus it's laid back at a 45 degree angle this way as well. So it's a compound angle that I'm actually cutting. Yeah, it uh, locks in on that uh, screw head. I gotta get me a different screw here. But we'll do that later on.
And again, I'm looking at the tip, getting my uh, size where I want it to be. I'm going to take this to the scotch brite here in a second. But you can see we have an angle cut here and an angle cut there. I'm going to take this scotch brite and be right back. I'm just going to take the burrs off it. Now we have the part deburred. And what I was doing is I cutting this down so that it was just a little high on that point to keep strength on there. So at this point, we need to cut the steps in this pocket. And so what I got is I got a little clamp system right here where you got the middle cut out. The true screws can go down here and that will act as a clamp. You just push it down so it's nice and flush. Actually, I didn't deburr the top of that, so let me. I knocked a little burr off of that yet. There's so that it's seat. So what I want to do is I want to set this up because I got to cut it at an angle. The same angles you got there. So I have I have two or three uh, quarter twenties sitting there so that I can pivot this and lock it in with this flat head, which is close enough. Uh, so now I'm at a 30 degree. I'm following the same profile as what I got on this angle. Normally I work with uh, the quill up higher, as high as I can, but uh, we're working with the quill down, they're little end mills, so it's not as big of a deal we're doing that, so uh, the camera angle, we can get a better camera angle. So basically what I'll do is I come down here, lock my table in, and I just want to touch the part. And then I want to just take a light, dusting on the part here and it looks like I'm sitting at an angle so let me uh, see where I got a burr on there I can tell that just just the way it cut yeah let's try that again And it's not uh, a big deal because uh, I'm going to be cutting a lot off that side anyhow. So let's try this again. There, it's a lot better, but it was a little bit off. But that's not real critical. I got to come over here and set my digital or uh, my knee height. And what I got to do is that uh, shim is 96 thousandths thick. So I'm going to take a 96 thousandths step 
And what I want to do is I want to cut the, the heel of this radius off. And uh, Because I don't want it actually pivoting on that radius part. So I'm just going to come in there about a hundred thousandths from where I touch. And then what I'm doing is uh, I want to cut this entire step in here. So I'm going to take it to this point, I'm going to measure it, I want it to be uh, about a hundred thousandths. And it looks like uh, about a hundred and thirty right now roughly. So we're looking good on that. And so now what I need to do is I need to cut about a 15 thousandths deep. Step in the middle. So I did set my digital to zero on this side. What I'm going to do here real quick is just to uh, knock that burr off so I can see that step better. And there we're at about 102 thousandths, so that's kind of uh, just eyeballing it in, that's what I wanted. So the part is now done. Let me take it and deburr it and bring it right back. And there you have it. Focused in on there. And it looks like I got a little bit of the step off there, but that's no big deal. Uh, the part that's contacting is here, in here, all the rest of that is just clearance. So, but uh, all they have to do now is uh, take a chamfering tool, deburr that hole a little bit. One more clamp is done. And so you can see how fast it was just to whip through that. And if you had like 25, 50 of these, you just do every operation on them. Uh, adjust your fixture to wherever you need it, do that operation on them, deburr them, put them back up and go through and so you can knock stuff like this out super fast by using fixturing. Well that'll be it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.